Hi, welcome to today's lesson. Today our learning target is I can use the easy common denominator method to add fractions with unlike denominators. Let's figure out what all this means. All right, so how to use the easy common denominator method to add unlike fractions? Well, in step one, we create equivalent fractions that share a common denominator. And in step two, we add the numerators. Now step two might sound familiar. I kind of hope it does. But step one, that's new. And there's a lot of new terms in there. So let's go over those one by one before we get started on the math itself. What are equivalent fractions? Equivalent fractions use different numbers to represent the same amount. So for example, here we have one half. We could represent that amount, one half, using different numbers. For example, we could represent one half as two fourths. Two fourths and one half represent the same amount. We could represent one half as three sixths or maybe five tenths. We could even represent one half with something wild and crazy. How about uh, 144, 288? These are all equivalent fractions because they all represent the same amount. How do we create equivalent fractions? Well, we multiply both the top and bottom numbers by the same number. Let me give you an example or three examples. All right, we'll start with one half again. What if we multiplied both the top and bottom number by two? We would come up with an equivalent fraction. One times two is two, and two times two is four. Two fourths is the same as one half. What if we multiplied one half by, oh, I don't know, four? Well, one times four is four and two times four is eight. We end up with four eighths. That is also an equivalent fraction to one half. What if we multiplied one half by um, 16? Well, one times 16 is 16, and two times 16 is 32. 16 30 seconds is yet another equivalent fraction for one half. We create equivalent fractions by multiplying the top and bottom numbers of a fraction by the same number, just as we did here, here, and here. All right, so here's the easy common denominator method. Here's an example of it, okay? I know this can look a little bit overwhelming at first, but if we break it down little by little, I think it'll make more sense. And then we'll do a couple of examples, okay? So looking at a reminder of the steps here, it says step one, create equivalent fractions that share a common denominator. Well, the way we're gonna do that using the easy common denominator method is to multiply the two denominators together. So we're gonna look in these two fractions, one half and three fifths, the two denominators are two and five, okay? So I've color coded things I hope in a way to organize and, and keep you focused on, on one thing at a time. So let's just focus on the first denominator, two. All right, we're gonna take that two and we're gonna bring it down here and we're gonna multiply that two by the denominator of the other fraction, five. And guess what two times five is? That's right, it's 10, right? And we're gonna take the denominator of the other fraction, five, and we're gonna bring it down here, right there, okay? And we're gonna multiply it by the denominator of the other fraction, two. And five times two, it's 10. So in essence, what we've done is we've multiplied two times five, the two denominators, and we've uh, created two new denominators for two new fractions, and they're the same denominator, 10. Two times five is 10. All right, so that's step one. Okay, well, that's part of step one. The second part of step one is now that we've multiplied the, well, let's stick with the, um, the first fraction, the, the red fraction here, two in one half, all right? So now that we've multiplied the denominator uh, of the other fraction, three-fifths, by this two, 
in order to create an equivalent fraction, just like we talked about, we also have to multiply the numerator three by the same number. And so what, what ends up happening is we multiply this other fraction, three fifths, right? By the same number, and that number is the denominator of the other fraction. So this two, right, this two, we're gonna multiply it by both parts of the fraction. And when we do that, five times two, as I showed you, is 10. And three times two, that's six. And then we repeat the process with the second fraction. And it's, it feels kind of the same because it kind of is. We'll take that denominator. We've already multiplied it by the denominator of the first fraction, which is two and one half. Right? And then we have to multiply the top number one by the same number. That's how we create an equivalent fraction. So we have five times one is five and five times two is 10. I know this sounds confusing. I'm gonna ask you to bear with me, okay? Because the more we do this, the less confusing it will become. All right, so that is the complete step one. We've created two new equivalent fractions that share a common denominator. So five tenths is equal to one half, right? And six tenths is equal to three fifths. And guess what? Five tenths and six tenths have the same denominator. And now we're back to where we started in a previous lesson. We can just add the numerators. That's step two. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and add the numerators. Five tenths plus six tenths equals 11 tenths. And we're done. All right, let's do a couple of examples here. Are you ready? And I think this is gonna make more sense as we do more and more examples. So step one, let's create equivalent fractions that share a common denominator. All right, I am going to take this three, the denominator of our first fraction in two thirds, and I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start by multiplying that three times the eight, that's the denominator of the other fraction, and that's gonna give me my denominator of the equivalent fraction, 24. But to create that equivalent fraction, I have to multiply the top number one by the same number as I multiplied the bottom number eight. And that number is three. So I'm going to put the three here as well in the numerator. And I'm going to multiply one times three. And I'm going to get three. So we have our first equivalent fraction. Three twenty-fourths is equal to one-eighth. What do you know about that? Let's go ahead and do this again with the other fraction now. Now I'm gonna take the denominator of the second fraction, 1 8 and I'm gonna bring it down here. You see that? I just brought this eight down here into the denominator to multiply by the denominator of the first fraction. So now I have eight times three, and guess what that is? Of course, it's the same denominator because I'm creating equivalent fractions, right? So I have 24 in my new fraction down here. But because I multiplied this three times the eight, I gotta multiply the two times the eight as well. And so I put an eight up here, and now I'm gonna multiply eight times two, and I get 16. And wouldn't you know it, 16 24ths is equal to two thirds. They're equivalent. And not only are these two new fractions equivalent to their old fractions, their old versions, but they have the same denominator. So now all I have to do to add is look at the numerators. 16 24ths plus 3 24ths is equal to 19 24ths. And there you have it. Let's try another example. Okay, and this time I'm gonna ask for your participation here. Are you ready? Let's start with the first fraction. That's three fifths, okay? And again, we're looking to create equivalent fractions that share a common denominator. So if we look at three fifths, five is in the denominator. What will we do with this five first? What are we gonna multiply it by first? Did you say we're gonna take this five and bring it down and put it right here and multiply it by the denominator of the other fraction? That would be correct. And nine times five is 45. Now, in order to create that equivalent fraction, because we multiplied the 
Denominator 9 by 5, we have to multiply the numerator in that same fraction by the same number, 5. So we now have 7 times 5, which is 35. And 35 45ths is equal to 7 ninths. They are equivalent fractions. All right. Now, in um, with the next fraction, 7 ninths, what are we going to do as our very next step? Go ahead and give that uh, question a try. All right. Did you say we're going to take this 9? And we're going to bring it all the way down and put it here and uh, multiply it by the denominator of the first fraction. Well, you are correct. I'm making my nines. Well, I'm going to make my nines the old fashioned way. I tried making it look like the other nine there that was typed, but no. Nine. There we go. All right. So now we have nine times five. Yep. That's 45. And wouldn't you know it? Take a quick peek. Our denominators are the same. We have common denominators. They're the same. Okay, so now, because we've multiplied this denominator 5 and 3 fifths by 9, what do we have to do in order to create an equivalent fraction for 3 fifths? That's right. We also have to multiply this 3 by 9. And what do we get when we multiply 3 by 9? You got it, 27. So now we have... Two equivalent fractions, 27 45ths is equal to 3 fifths, 35 45ths is equal to 7 ninths, and they have a common denominator. They have the same denominator. All we have left to do is add. What do you get when you add 27 45ths plus 35 45ths? Go ahead and figure that out. That's right, you get 62 40 fifths. What do you know about that? All right, so the steps to using the easy common denominator method to add fractions with unlike denominators. Step one, we're gonna create equivalent fractions that share a common denominator. Step two, we're gonna add the numerators. Our learning target today is I can use the easy common denominator method to add fractions with unlike denominators. Now I know that this could be, might be very confusing and you might not feel ready to practice on your own yet. So today, more than ever, I'm gonna encourage you to work with me through our five practice problems. And I promise, maybe not today, but tomorrow or the next day, as we keep practicing and practicing, you will get this. All right, let's get to work.